Well, I'd like to say we can go live to the commentary box now at the Crucible under the 1985 world champion, Dennis Taylor. Dennis, going to look at some of the matches upcoming shortly. We're just going to reflect uh, yesterday a couple of players going through to the second round, notably Mark Williams, who rattled off six successive frames last night uh, to beat Alan McManus, uh, playing really well. However, is the post-match interview we've got to talk about because he said he did contemplate retirement during lockdown but he said he slapped himself around the face, kicked himself up the backside and thought, no, I'm going to carry on playing until I'm 50. That's eased some pressure off his shoulders. Yeah, well, he loved the game too much to retire. Uh, he didn't want to be retiring too early. Uh, I mean, he's still playing some unbelievable snooker. I thought he was going to have a tough one against Alan McManus. Alan coming through the qualifiers uh, in uh, quite a bit of glory and was playing really well and started off well against Mark. But Mark, to, to, to rattle off six frames against someone like Alan McManus just shows you the class of the player. And uh, you don't become three times a world champion uh, without having an awful lot of class. And uh, yeah, there's uh, plenty more to come from Mark Williams, but it's getting tougher and tougher uh, with, with each year going by. But listen, he, he, he took 15 years to come back and win his third world title. So he's still in there battling away as Mark. And just a word on Ding Junhui as well. Obviously, he never won a world title. One of the best players never to have won it so far. And he was taken all the way by Mark King, coming out with a 10-9 success. Yeah, it looked as if he was going to go out because Mark was in uh, the final frame and had a chance and uh, just ran slightly out of position. Otherwise, uh, Ding could have been out of this year's world championship. But an awful lot of support for Ding Junhui. Uh, we're still looking for the first Asian player to lift uh, the Betfred World Championship. Yeah, there's a lot of great young Chinese players coming through. Uh, and uh, Ding's still the main one, though. So uh, he's come close on a number of occasions. So it'll be interesting to see how he uh, develops this year. But a great win against Mark King, who pushed him so hard all the way. Every credit to Mark King for the way he played. Let's talk about a couple of games currently ongoing and come to a conclusion this evening. I know you've been looking at the Neil Robertson, the Yang Wen Bo game uh, this morning. Now, that's on a knife edge. It's 5 4 to Neil Robertson going into the evening session. It could easily have been 4 4, couldn't it? Uh, Lang Wen Bo had every chance to make it 4 4. Neil Robertson came in, stole that frame to make it 5 3. But he got to be denied, uh, Wen Bo. 113 break in the final frame of the session to take it to 5 4. And uh, I thought that was a really good game. And that's really exciting going into this evening. Yeah, I thought he was going to go to bits in the last frame because he threw that frame away. I mean, it would never happen again. It was bizarre. You know, he, he'd got to the stage where Neil needed a snooker and then he played a little bit of a poor positional shot, but he needed snookers and then played a, a strange shot, hit the pink and went in off. And Neil, to be fair, pinched that frame with a, a terrific clearance. But to come back and uh, make his highest break and a century break to be just one frame behind, that's going to be a fascinating battle this evening and Liang Wenbo is just, uh, well they're both brilliant break builders so that's going to be a, a, a terrific encounter this evening and one to look forward to. On another table we've got the conclusion of the David Gilbert uh, versus Kurt Mafflin game as well, that's currently 5-4 uh, to Mafflin, obviously David Gilbert, what a run he had last year, an emotional run uh, to the semi-final, we've got a bit of work to do this evening. Well he certainly has because he's up against uh, a very uh, tough opponent in Kurt Mathlin, who's a brilliant break builder also. Very attacking player. He's not afraid to go for his shots. Indeed, uh, Dave Gilbert's similar type of player. And I commentated on that match and it was a very, very entertaining game to, to watch and commentate on. And that's on a knife edge as well. Difficult to, to pick a winner. You know, Kurt coming through the qualifiers. They're, they're, these, these fellas are so match sharp. But uh, the big boys still seem to be able to, to, to pull it out when, when needed. But they're, 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 that's why a lot of the matches are 5-4. They're so close. And this first round is getting through that one is the biggest uh, stumbling block. Because when you get to the three sessions, then you really feel your world championship started. So the first round, uh, the, the top players can be a little bit vulnerable. Well, let's have a look at some of the first round matches then yet to start. And talking of vulner being vulnerable, uh, Jack Lazowski, could he be one of the most vulnerable seeds? Because he's got a real tough opponent in Anthony McGill. Quarterfinals, of course, in 2015. And we noticed last year, uh, obviously, him, John Higgins, and Stephen Maguire all been practicing together uh, in a house up in Scotland. Yeah, they've been putting an awful lot of work in, and uh, it showed the way John Higgins started his match as well. So, uh, Anthony's going to be a tough opponent, but uh, Jack. Lesowski is a player I love watching. 
He's a, he practices a lot and he's great friends with Judd Trump and he plays the game similar to Judd Trump. Very entertaining player to watch, but he's going to have to be careful with uh, Anthony McGill because he is a real tough uh, competitor. And that's, that's going to be another... Uh, they're all terrific matches, but that's another one that's going to be very interesting. Yeah, obviously Sean Murphy, uh, the magician, gets his campaign underway uh, on Monday as well. Winner in uh, 2005, runner-up twice in 09 and 2015. A couple of wins on tour already uh, this year. It's going to be, I think it's going to be an emotional journey to the Crucible for the Magician this year, isn't it? Yeah, well, you know, what, what happened, Brandon Parker, you know, it was, uh, we've done the tributes to him, you know, sadly missed. And Sean was a very, very close friend and Brandon was his manager. So I think uh, Sean will be coming in this year, uh, even though there's no crowds there. Sean will be in there and maybe at the back of his mind, he's going to be playing for uh, his, uh, his greatest friend and uh, the gentleman that used to manage him. I think he'll be out there trying to uh, maybe win this year's World Championship in memory of Brandon Parker, who did so much for the game of snooker. He's got a tough first round game as well against Nop and Sangam, but um, obviously, would you expect him to come through that? And obviously, he's he thinking of doing it for Brandon this year. Well, I think that'll be at the back of his mind, but the, the, the Thai player is a very talented player as well, and uh, he could make it difficult for Sean, but I, I, I fancy Sean strongly to come through that one. And before I let you go, Dennis, just a word about your fellow countrymen, of course, uh, Mark Allen coming into this. When the draw was made, we noticed how the bottom half was, was so brutal uh, with all the big names in there. The top half has got, obviously, the world champion, Judd Trump, amongst many others in there, but Mark Allen probably took confidence from that draw ahead of his first round game on Tuesday against Jamie Clark. Yeah, he's got a tough one against Jamie Clark, a very talented player from uh, Wales. There's so many great players come out of that part of the world. But Mark Allen is one of the players that I would uh, fancy this year. It's time we had another world champion from the uh, north of Ireland. It's been a long time since I lifted the title. There's every chance he could do. He's got the ability. He's the Masters champion. Uh, so he'll give it a good run. And Jordan Brown also, a uh, partner uh, that practices with uh, Mark Allen, in Antrim there. He's got through to the Crucible, uh, which is a fabulous achievement for him, but he's got a tough one in Mark Selby. But uh, uh, it's nice to see two players from the north of Ireland uh, playing at the Crucible Theatre. There's just so many fascinating matches coming up. And uh, it's just great that we've got a Betfred World Championship on this year, Matt, because it didn't look like we were going to do. We had the crowds in at the start. They're not here, but it'll still be a fabulous uh, World Championship. And Looking forward to the, the remainder of it. Betfred, proud sponsor of the World Snooker Championship.